turning now to the war in Ukraine. We're following this Reuters report, which says Russia is planning to send combat vessels to the Caribbean to project global power. This according to a senior U.S. official telling Reuters. So it could be perhaps in Cuba or Venezuela. A little concerning of a headline there. Brent Sadler, he is a retired U.S. Navy captain. Caroline Glick is a former senior foreign policy advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, captain, I want to start with you on this. You, you see that headline come across your computer, your phone. What goes through your mind? Uh, that's one of our least patrolled and under-resourced of our numbered fleets. That's Fourth Fleet and the Southern Command. And, and again, uh, one of our most threatened southern borders. And so when the Russians coming back again, it's no it's not a new exercise. It's happened too often. But this one seems to be in a very heightened tensions and also larger than normal at a time that you have Venezuela potentially going to war against Guyana. So very concerning and also a place where we're a little too weak. Hmm. Uh, definitely monitoring that, of course, the very latest from the war in Ukraine, switching gears now to the war in Israel, uh, learning an update here. Israel had targeted an UNRWA school that the country says was actually being used by Hamas, an Islamic Jihad terrorist. The IDF saying the deadly strike targeted terrorists who were among the forces that took part in the October 7th massacre and were reportedly planning another attack on Israeli soldiers here. The IDF adding many steps have been taken to reduce the chance of harm to those not involved. But as has been reported, Hamas hides behind civilians, puts themselves into hospitals, schools, among other civilian locations. And this all happens amid a Saudi-based report, which indicates Hamas had rejected yet another hostage ceasefire deal. Mm -hmm. Hamas saying they want a guarantee that the war will end. Um, a lot to throw at you here, Caroline, here. Uh, but the update on this ceasefire, this push by President Biden, uh, for Netanyahu to accept it, and this latest development from Hamas asking for a guarantee the world will, uh, the war will end. Uh, what does this mean for Israel? It means that we carry on. Uh, we carry forth in our effort, in our war effort, to uh, defeat Hamas militarily, politically, and to prevent Gaza from ever man manifesting a threat to Israel again in the future. Um, UNRWA, the school there. You, you can stop calling them schools, I think, because to all intents and purposes, what we've seen since October 7th is that UNRWA is just a diplomatic arm of Hamas. All of its installations are Hamas installations. Its headquarters in Gaza City was Hamas's headquarters. They had this massive warren of uh, underground uh, underground bunkers, their command and control center, their, commun their, their communication center. All of it was under UNRWA's headquarters in Gaza City. I mean, this is just going on and on and on. Talking about UNRWA as any sort of relief organization is ridiculous. It's a, it, it's a Hamas organization. And as to the ceasefire deal, just very briefly, you know, President Biden, I, I think it was sort of a dirty trick that he played on Friday night. He gave the speech after the Sabbath had started in Israel so that the government couldn't respond. And he essentially presented a deal as Israel's that Israel had never agreed to because the deal effectively gave the United States and Qatar and Egypt uh, veto power over Israel gets to reinstate uh, the war after a ceasefire to get some of the hostages out uh, if and when Hamas breaches that deal. So Israel said, no, we never agreed to that, that we were going to end the war. And Hamas, since all they want is for Israel to surrender and end the war, said, well, then fine, we don't want it because the only deal we're interested in is an Israeli surrender. Yeah, a and lot Israel, of people, frankly, is only interested in a deal that brings about Hamas's defeat because they want to kill all of us and we don't want them to. A lot of people questioning President Biden's comments there, as you mentioned. Hezbollah, this is another one we're watching here, too. Hezbollah has been sending tons of rockets into Israel. Yesterday, a reserve soldier was killed and 10 others were hurt. Uh, Israel responded, though, with massive strikes of their own. Israel is warning of a possible war now with Hezbollah. Iran is threatening Israel. Captain could this be now a larger scale war in the Middle East? Well, I, I think uh, this was part of Iran's plan. And, and remember, ever since October 7th, you had, of course, Hamas engaging Israel directly in conflict. You had the Houthis in the Red Sea also, and along the Red Sea attacking Israel also directly. And Hezbollah, too, on the day after the October 7th, have sustained attacks all along that northern border. 
and they are a far larger and a far more dangerous threat to Israel. And so I think for the last few months, it's not a secret that Israel has been preparing for the potential of this very uh, likely outcome, a war to, de to destroy Hezbollah's capability to threaten Israel on the north as well. Yeah, certainly something to watch. We'll keep our eye on it. Thank you so much, Captain Prince Sadler. Caroline Glick, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still to come, the House Oversight Committee referring Hunter Biden and James Biden for criminal prosecution for making false statements about President Biden and family influence peddling. Those allegations coming from some familiar names, members of Congress, Comer, Smith, etc. More with our political panel.